Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. Today I'm going to be talking about multiplication and addition. You might think that's a little simple for what I usually talk about, but I'm going to talk about how we can apply multiplication and addition to genetics. And unlike in math, I'm going to start with multiplication because it's actually easier that way. Um, multiplication is going to occur in genetics if we ever have independent events that are going to occur in sequence. Another way to tip yourself off to that is if in the question it's saying the word and. So let me give you an example of that. What are the odds of flipping a coin five times and getting tails on every flip? Well, you can use the rule of multiplication to figure that out. So what are the odds of getting a tails on one flip of the coin? That's just one in two. So all you do is you multiply all the probabilities out. One in two, and that's gonna be one in four, eight, 16. So that's a one in 32 probability of flipping the coin five times in a row and getting tails every time. Same thing would be true if we were to say you're going to have five kids. What are the odds of all of them being boys? It's just multiplying the probability of each of those events because they have to occur in a specific sequence. So let me show you how we could apply that to a couple math and then genetic problems. And so you may want to, as you watch the video, pause the video after I present the questions, try to work them on your own, and then I'll go over the right answers. So here's the first two. Number one, rolling snake eyes on two pair of dice. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, there are six sides to a dice. A one is going to occur on one out of every six of those sides, and so it's a one in six probability of rolling a one on one dice times a one in six probability on the other dice, and so the right answer would be one in 36. Uh, so it's going to be rare that you get snake eyes, roughly 3% of the time, less than 3% of the time. Let's go to the next one. What are the odds of picking a three out of the deck, returning it to the deck, and then picking a king out of the deck? How do you solve this one? Well, you have to look at each of those different events because so, they're happening independently of one another. What are the odds of picking a three out of a deck? Well, there are four threes in a deck of normal playing cards. There are 52. And so to save myself a little bit of time, I'm going to reduce that. So that's one in 13 probability of picking out a three. Since you're returning it to the deck, there are going to be 52 cards again. So the odds of getting a king out of the deck are also going to be one in 13. And so the odds of doing both of those in succession is going to be one in 169. So it's going to be really, really rare. Okay, so that's math. Now let's apply it to genetics. Let's apply it to uh, the work of Mendel. So in this first problem, in a cross between pea plants that are heterozygous, so they're hybrid for a purple flower, what's the probability that the offspring will be homozygous recessive? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we first write each of the parents, so big P, little p, crossed with big P, little p. So what are the odds that this parent over here since we're looking for a homozygous recessive, to build that, we have to get a little p, little p. So what are the odds that this parent is going to contribute that little p? Well, that's a one in two probability. What are the odds that this other parent is also going to give a little p? Well, that's a one in two. And in order to get that homozygous recessive, we have to have both those occurring. So we simply multiply those, or that's going to be a one in four probability. Now you might think to yourself, this is easy, I could do this with a simple Punnett square. But the next problem is going to show you how important it is to learn to do multiplication. So here's question one, uh, or question two. In a cross between this parent and that parent, what is the probability that the offspring will be this? This is a question that I love to ask on my test and the AP Biology folks love to ask as well. Because when you see a question like this, some people will just shut down because they see it's a tri-hybrid cross. They're imagining like an eight by eight Punnett square, impossible to solve. And so if you use the rule of multiplication, it's actually really simple. And so all you do is work a letter at a time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna concentrate on the A's, these two. So these parents, what are the odds that I'm gonna get that offspring? And so I could just do this in my head. I know this is a one in two probability. If you can't do that, do a little Punnett square. So this would be one parent. This would be the other parent. And so that's going to be a big A, big A. This is going to be a big A, little A, big A, little A, little A, little A. So the odds of getting a big A, little A is going to be a two and a four or a one in two probability. Now let's just work on the B's. So with that parent and that parent, what are the odds that we're going to get this? Well, this one's always going to give a big B. This one will give a big B half the time and a little B half the time. So the odds of getting that are also going to be one and two. 
What are the odds of getting a big C, big C? Well, same thing. This one will always give a big C. Do a Punnett square if you're confused. This one will give a big C half of the time, a little C half of the time. So that's also a one and two probability. So what are the odds of me getting this from those two parents? I just multiply those because all three of those have to happen. And so there's a one in eight probability that you're going to get an offspring that looks like that. And so that's a solvable problem. So you should practice a few of these, but it's a good way to understand what you could get for answers and not having to build some kind of an unwieldy uh, Punnett square. Next, let's go to addition. The rule of addition occurs, the tip off is going to be if you see the word or in the question, uh, but it occurs when we have mutually exclusive events, so two things that could go either way. Uh, so again, let me give you an example of that. Let's say I flip the coin again. What are the odds that I'm going to get either a heads or a tails? Well, how do you solve that? That seems, you could just answer it just thinking about the question, but what are the odds I'll get a heads? It's a one and two. What are the odds that I'll get a tail? A one and two. And so when I say, what are the odds of getting a heads or a tails? You can build it in two different ways. And so we're gonna simply add those up. So it's a one in one probability or a probability of one, or 100% of the time, you're either gonna get a heads or a tails. So that's kind of when we use addition. Let's do a couple of math problems to kind of sort that out. Number one, what are the odds of rolling a two or a five on a six-sided die? So again, you may want to pause the video, try this one out. What's the odds of rolling a two or a five on a six-sided dice? Well, the odds of rolling a two are one and six. Odds of rolling are a five are one and six, and so we simply add those together. So that is a two and six, or a one in three probability of getting a two or a five. Let's go to the next one, which is a little bit harder. What's the odds of picking a five or a heart out of a deck of playing cards? So again, we're gonna be using the rule of addition. Let's start on the five. So how many fives are in the deck? Four, so there's four out of 52 probability of picking a five. What are the odds of picking a heart? Well, there are 13 hearts in the deck. And so you may be tempted to just add 13 to it, but we've already eliminated one of those hearts because we chose the five of hearts. And so that's gonna be 12 out of 52 since we eliminate that. And so that's gonna be a 16 out of 52, which reduces to eight out of 26 or four out of 13. Probability that if you pick a, a card out of the deck, it's either gonna be a five or a heart. Okay, so that's math. Now let's apply it to science. Let's apply it specifically to genetics. So in this question, in a cross between pea plants that are heterozygous for purple, so we're going to have the same parents here, what are the odds that the offspring is going to be heterozygous? So what are the odds? What we're looking for is an individual that is this for our offspring. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's first of all build it one way. So we could get, this one could give the big P and this one could give the little P. So that's a one half probability, one half probability of that. And so that is a one in four probability to build it this way. But this one over here could give its little P and this one could give its big P. And so that would be another way we could build it. So let me write those over here. What are the odds of that? Well, that's also going to be a one in four because there's a half on this and a half on that. And so the question is saying, what is the probability of being heterozygous? Since we can build it in two ways, we're going to add those up. And so there's a one half probability. And so when you look at a Punnett square, a Punnett square visually shows you that. But if you use the rules of addition, then you don't have to do a lot of uh, work. So let's do the last one. So this is the uh, final question. If you can, if you can answer this one, you can. You're accurately using the rule of multiplication and the rule of addition. So in this one, we're crossing this parent. They're heterozygous for everything. Uh, with this parent, what are the odds that we would either get this or that? Okay. So this is we're going to have to apply everything to it. So let's start with the A's. So if we go with the A's, what are the odds with that parent and that parent that we're going to have this? Well, that'd be a one in four probability. And since I'm looking at the A's, let me go to the next A. It's gonna be a one in four probability over here. Let's look at this B with this parent and that parent. What are the odds that we're gonna have that? Well, that would be a one in two probability over here. And over here, that's also gonna be a one in two probability. Now let's look at the C. So with that parent and that parent, what are the odds that we're gonna get that? Well, that is a one in two probability on that one. 
And over here, it's going to be a 1 and 2 probability as well. And so what are the odds that we're going to have both of those? Well, this one is going to be, I'm just checking again to make sure I have that all right. Yeah, looks good. So we're going to multiply these all up. So that's a fourth times, so that's an eighth times sixteenth, so one in sixteen. Odds over here, we're going to add that up because we got the or in there. So that's going to be a one in sixteen over there. So it's going to be a two in sixteen or a one in eight probability that we're going to get that. And so again, if you can apply the rules of multiplication, if you can apply the rules of addition to genetics, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And I hope that's helpful.